Hi everyone. I miss you guys so much. Um, I was unable to post earlier this week, but I am back and I will be doing a historically accurate mid 19th century slave hairstyle. I kind of wanted to go through um, the research that I did and the uh, method in which they would have gotten achieved the hairstyle. Um, just to start with, um, I just wanted to go through the research that I did. I relied a lot on WPA, uh, the WPA former slave interviews um, from the Library of Congress. And I also have two of my favorite books, um, New Remnants of Self, um, and this is by uh, Helen Foster. Um, it is really well researched and it basically uh, talks about uh, African American clothing in the antebellum South. And then this is another favorite. Uh, you guys know I love Shane White, anything Shane White. So, um, uh, this is styling African American expressive culture from its beginnings to the, from its beginnings to the Zoot Suit uh, by Shane White and Graham White, and this is again another well researched book. I will be um, listing them down below, um, and they do talk a bit about uh, hair care uh, during slavery, and. Um, they also just go through the change that African slaves went through um, from freedom to slavery and then to freedom again. So um, in Africa, um, a big social activity is hair grooming. And well, um, before um, a slave was taken in their village or home, uh, that would be a... Um, a big part of free time would be grooming and that would be a community event. Um, you would be combing your daughter's hair, uh, possibly uh, even your husband's hair. It may be a ritual among men as well and among women you talk to each other. We know, we know about this when you go to the beauty salon. That's a big social time. Um, during slavery, that social time was greatly curtailed. Um, so we always think of head wraps as something very African. Um, actually, um, uh, styling um, African American expressive culture, Shane White actually um, begs to differ. He believes that um, in Africa, um, before hair was not covered uh, because they had time to groom their hair and put it into very elaborate styles, elaborate braiding, um, comb, comb outs. It was very, um, it was very, uh, very elaborate and ritualistic. Um, but during, um, they say the combination of Christianity, which, uh, there is in Christianity, some Christians even today believe that when you enter the house of God, you should cover your hair. So um, there are some arguments uh, throughout the community um, about where that ritual came about. But the most important thing I want to express to you is that um, in Africa, before European uh, interaction, Africans wore their hair out in elaborate styles um, and it was not covered. This came later. Um, so during slave times, uh, during slavery, um, this ritualistic uh, hair grooming time was again curtailed. So they had to come up with ways in which uh, they could protect their hair um, and be able to do something with it uh, for, um, I guess, your religious ceremonies on the weekend or uh, if you have um, 
if you have Sunday time, uh, you're doing something with your family, um, you want to be able to do your hair. So, um, to start with, um, my research really found that lard was used um, for um, hair care. Um, I actually have used lard maybe about at three reenactments. Uh, it's nothing wrong with it. Um, I just, I have experienced rancid lard before and it's just, it kind of, it's kind of iffy. Um, but this is what my ancestors used. And so it's, I mean, that's what they used. Um, granted, um, people think that they were using a lot of lard on their hair. Uh, if you are, if you are allotted a certain amount of meat or um, lard, you are not going to waste it on your hair. So, um, in in uh, the WPA interviews, I would say about um, seventy to eighty percent of the women who talk about doing their hair never mention putting grease in their hair. Um, in fact, I have come across references where later on uh, guys talk about, uh, well, y'all today put all that grease in your hair, but back in the day, all we had to have was a card, a wool card, and we would comb out our hair. Um, and it was just as straight. So, um, but I use, I do put in a grease. Um, that's just, I like the way it makes my hair feel. So, um, Lard is an option. What I will be using today is Crisco. Um, Crisco is, it looks almost exactly like lard. I, I don't really see the big difference between lard and Crisco. Um, it is a uh, vegetable shortening, so, um, and it doesn't go rancid. <laughs> That's a big plus. Um, and then another substitute, which looks very similar, is shea butter. I use a lot of shea butter. That's what I use as lotion, and that's what I use in my regular hair care routine, um, shea butter. Um, also, I do have some prepared lard here. Um, I put in rosemary and... I warmed it up in the microwave, put in rosemary and, what was it, um, tea tree oil. Um, I prefer to put in a natural bug repellent in my hair. Um, a lot of times I am sleeping on the ground if it's a campaign style event. If not, I'm not as worried about putting a uh, bug repellent in my hair. Um, but if I am just using the shea butter or the Crisco, I do use an oil. Um, this is grapeseed oil, castor oil, and I put in tea tree and rosemary as well in here. Um, so that's just a natural bug repellent. It's not going to, you know, really do a lot if a bug really wants to get into it, but it's kind of, it's, I think it's more of a, it makes me feel better. So I do it. Um... But to start with, as I said, I will be doing, um, I think I'll be doing a combination of Crisco and Shea Butter today. Um, but what you need, what you'll need, oh, I totally forgot this. Um, I will be using a long tooth comb. Um, during slavery, they, <laughs> they did not have picks. <laughs> Um, I did, did hear two references to slaves making picks from, uh, cow bones. Um, but most of them use wood cards. Um, so I, I'll put a picture of it, up. uh, it's basically what they use to card out the wool. <laughs> and I have seen those in person and they are like, they look like spikes on a block of wood. I was like, are you serious that they actually use those? And yes, um, they use them and uh, they survived. So you can use that if you like, but um, 
I am accident prone, so I am going to be using this. I do not want spikes anywhere near my face. Um, I'm sure they had a lot better hand-eye coordination than I did. Um, and then you will need um, string or yarn. Today I'll be doing something called, um, I'm sorry, um, called what they called wrapping. Um, so I have a, this is synthetic yarn um, and it is in black. Um, and it is called wrapping, or we call it today threading. Um, I've heard both, but mainly threading in modern terms. But back in the day, if you see wrapping, this is what they're talking about. Um, so um, back in the day, they would have used, I've seen references to eel skin. So they would uh, strip the eel of its skin and then cut the skin into strips and then use that to wrap around the hair. Um, then I've seen cotton, like they would take the cotton and wrap that around just like raw cotton. Um, also raw wool and they'd wrap that around. Um, but I like to use string, so, or yarn, um, that's just what, it, I'm not going to waste, because I usually just throw it away, um, once I take it out of my hair, because it's pretty greasy afterwards, so, um, I just throw it away, um, and usually, if you see my hair in a wrap, this is what's underneath, so let me get started, I'm doing a lot of talking, okay, so this is my hair unstretched. You'll need a clippy, that's what I call a clippy. Um, I'm just gonna do the front two and then turn off the camera and do and come back. You want to start by sectioning off a piece of hair and then combing from the bottom up, making sure that it is completely detangled. And this is my lard um, rosemary essential oil um, and tea tree oil mix. I really love the lard so I started out with the lard and I basically just got maybe a um, quarter size piece of lard and then r rubbed my hands together and then rubbed it through my hair. Um, and you just want to make sure it's completely um, covered. There are no chunks um, just hanging around. Um, you want to make sure that it's ev evenly distributed uh, through that lock. And then you grab a piece of string. I don't use scissors. I just snap it. Um, and then you start wrapping from the top down. You want to wrap maybe a few more times at the top. Um, than you would on the regular and on the rest of the strand and then you want to wrap all the way down. At the end you want to tie a very loose slip knot um, making sure that um, you can just pull the tail and it comes right out. Do not knot this in your hair people. Um, and here I am doing the very last one and I come up with a method um, and you'll come up with your own method as well and it'll be so easy once you've kind of gotten the hang of it. This style of course originally was an African style um, and of course when um, the African American slaves um, came to America they had to adjust and so I guess this is one of the easier styles that they kept and it was a very good protective style so threading or wrapping became very popular. Um, they would usually have their hair like this all through the week, um, put a head wrap on um, and then on Sunday when they had time to take it down for a religious ceremony um, and comb it out and pin it up and then they would put it right back in for the rest of the week. You should understand that this hairstyle was not just for slaves. Free persons would have also done this hairstyle. Though I believe that free persons may have had a little bit more time and freedom to do their hair during the week. 
this is how it should look when you're done. Sometimes they stick up a little bit more than other times. This time it's actually quite t tamed. Um, so I think I did a really good job. Um, there were some times where my arms started to get tired. Uh, it's been a long day. You might see um, my eyes look a bit droopy. I'm like, ugh. Um, but it's done. And tomorrow I will show you what how it turned out. Hello everyone! So today I'm getting ready for the day. Um, I'm going to do a few other videos today, so I'm actually going to take down my hair. Um, I am actually wearing silk today, so I do not want to get this lard on my blouse. So I just kind of go over here, grab my clippy, and clip it like that. And so uh, it pretty well protected so I'm gonna start to take down my hair um, this is also used as a modern-day stretching style for african-american women with natural hair such as myself um, and so I'm just gonna go through let's pretend that this is the end of an event and you want to get your hair um, you want to take your hair down um, because I did this little tie thing at the bottom, um, it should be easy to take out. So just I just pull the tail, and then you kind of got to get it started. And once that's over, it's kind of easy to get out. Okay. I'm going to do a fro-ish type thing today. So you can see the hair, it's, com it's stretched. So uh, sometimes I actually use this style, use this method to actually uh, straighten my hair a bit before I flat iron it or hot comb it. So um, it doesn't put as much, take as much effort to straighten my hair. last one with you guys um, yay uh, I wanted to kind of tell you guys that you can actually use ribbon instead of yarn or string um, but the reason why I choose to use string is because I feel that it's easier to put on um, just personally some people find the ribbons easier to put on um, but especially when I'm doing it for modern purposes I prefer to do the easy bit at night um, when I'm tired and do the hard bit in the morning um, so it's all you know it's all what you want to do um, of course if you want to have a very easy morning and just like with the ribbon you just pull it and it comes out so it all depends but I find when I do the ribbon it's like slippery when you're putting it on um, but I think that it would also be a good idea to do it for reenactments because it comes right out after reenactment when you're really tired um, but I actually haven't done the ribbon for reenactment so I don't know how well it stays <laughs> So, and you never know. So, your hair may come out. I have taken off my headscarf at reenactments. So, um, I think it looks more interesting to have yarn. Um, but this is what it looks like when it comes out. And I'm doing a fro, so I'm just going to just go through. Oh. 
Also, you may want to put some um, leave-in conditioner or something in it. I use Cantu Shea Butter, whipped shea butter. Um, you can use whatever you want. Uh, that's kind of moisturizing because after reenactment, you've had your hair in yarn for a good part of a week. So. I tend to uh, put a little bit of oil, a little bit of my oil. Uh, I want to smell that. Okay. So I will come back. I will come back once I am done with uh, combing out my hair. Hi guys, so this is how my hair turned out. Um, this I actually ended up doing, I was going to do it Crisco, all Crisco, but I was really liking how the lard was feeling last night, so I basically did the whole thing in lard, except this little piece here, I think this one, yeah the swoopy piece. Um, so I, I, I think Crisco and lard are, you can't really tell the difference between the two. Um, it is, my hair is pretty soft. So, um, I would really recommend Crisco or lard when you are doing a period correct American slave hairstyle. Um, and I also like this style because once I leave a reenactment, if I'm going out with friends, I really don't look like a hot mess. So I can actually do my hair. Uh, and no, you don't have to have a funky fro. Um, this stretch hairstyle, this stretching actually allows where you put it back in a ponytail or um, pin it up if you like to pin up your hair. So um, it's very versatile. So you don't have to go <laughs> uh, do a funky fro. Um, like I've done today. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you have any questions about, um, if you have any questions about the research that I did, uh, about the things that I used, please feel free to contact me. Um, please comment below. Um, I am always happy, happy to talk to people about, um, about research and just in general about um, American slave hairstyles. So please have a good week and you'll be hearing from me soon. Like us and subscribe.